Wundt was far ahead of his time when he wrote that consciousness holds only a single thought, a single perception. Wundt had measured the mind, and also began experimenting this basis for a new science. Wundt was the founder of psychology as a formal academic discipline. He established the first laboratory, edited the first journal, and began experimental psychology as a science. The greatest areas he investigated were sensation and perception, attention, feeling, reaction time, and association. Wundt's contribution to the founding of modern psychology stems not so much from any unique scientific discovery as from his vigorous promotion or selling of the idea of systematic experimentation. Founders and originators are both essential to the formation of a science, as indispensable as the architect and the builder in the construction of a house. With this distinction in mind, we can see why other researchers was not considered founding members of psychology. College classrooms today, as you well know, are full of multimedia experiences and devices. You might be surprised to learn that the college classroom of Vance at his time also had what passed as multimedia experiences, but far more primitive. In his day, the primary device was the so-called magic lantern, which had actually been in use in the 17th century. It was like a slide projector. It featured multiple screens, which, like theater sets, could be raised from the floor or dropped from the ceiling, ready to receive images from any of several lanterns. Instructors and their graduate assistants devoted much time to organizing lectures around extravagant displays using the new media of the 1870s. Wilhelm Wundt was at the forefront of the new media technology of the day. Some of his students who brought his new system of psychology to America also brought his magic lanterns to our classroom. With the laboratory and the journal established and the immense amount of research underway, Wundt turned his energy to philosophy. During the years from 1880 to 1891, he wrote on ethics, logic, and systematic philosophy. Recent data of history suggest that Vaunt was not in favor of the total separation of psychology from philosophy. The subject matter of Vaughn's psychology was consciousness, although earlier in his career, he was also concerned with the notion of the unconscious. Historians disagree on why he abandoned his early work on the unconscious, but none deny that he turned to the sole study of consciousness. Wundt described his psychology as a science of conscious experience. It follows that the method of a scientific psychology must involve observations of conscious experience. However, only the person having such an experience can observe it. Wundt declared that the method of observation must therefore necessarily involve introspection. Introspection is examination of one's own mind to inspect and report on personal thoughts or feelings. The introspective method did not originate with Wundt. Its use can be traced back to Socrates. Vaughn's introspection was the application of precise experimental control over the conditions under which introspection was performed. 
In physics, introspection had been used to study light and sound. Vaughn's position, like that of any innovator, was open to criticism. Especially vulnerable was his method of internal perception or introspection. Critics ask, when introspection by different observers provides different results, how do we decide which one is correct? Experiments using the introspection technique cannot always yield agreement because introspection observation is self-observation, decidedly a private experience. As such, disagreements cannot be settled by repeated the observations. Vaughn recognized his fault, but delivered that the method could be improved by providing greater training and experience for the observers. Vaughn's monumental contributions were not diminished by the fact that much of the history of psychology after Vaughn consists of rebellion against the limitations he placed on the field. Vaughn had a monopoly on the new psychology for a short time. The science was also beginning to flourish at other German laboratories. Although Vaughn was obviously the most important founder and organizer in the early days of psychology, others were also influential in the field's early development. Researchers who did not subscribe to Vaughn's viewpoint proposed different ideas, but all were engaged in the common enterprise of expanding psychology as a science. Their work along with Vons made Germany an undisputed center of the movement. Developments in England would give psychology a radical different theme and direction. Charles Darwin proposed a theory of evolution and Francis Galton began his work in psychology of individual differences. These ideas influenced the direction of psychology when it came to the United States even more than the pioneering work of Vaughn.